Hey guys, I hope you guys are safe at home in quarantine, but don't forget to subscribe here at Fino Boxing and follow my personal one at Adriana underscore sports. And guess what? We're going to knock out this coronavirus. Bop, bop, bop. <laughs> Hey guys, we are here with WBA Gold Welterweight Champion Virgil Ortiz. Virgil, it's great to see you. I know <laughs> this is the second time that I talk to you uh, through these Zoom interviews, but hey, this is life now. Um, we're looking forward to seeing you fight really soon, July 24th. Um, of course, this is the postponement of your fight that, were, that was originally scheduled for March 28th. Um, you know, talk to me about how difficult this whole pandemic has been for you from the postponement of your fight training alone to you know up until recently you started training back with Robert just everything that came with this how have you been handling all this you know I think we handled it pretty well uh, I would say that I was probably one of the fighters that actually stayed ready during the pandemic and all that stuff you know when I went home I, I was still training outside I was doing it on the streets I was I was still running every day doing strength conditioning with uh, my coach and the, at the park so, you know, leading up to all that, I, I came to California to start training again, starting to get sparring and actually hitting the bags and all that stuff. So I think uh, not too much has changed. I mean, the, the way that I did it changed, but, like, the, the results are, are pretty much the same. You know, we, we always train. We train harder no matter what we do. And everything that I do, I want to be the best. So I feel like we're, we're still on track. Awesome. Um, like I said, July 24th can come soon enough. How special is it for you to be, you know, the first one to bring back Golden Box, Golden Boy Boxing back to the, uh, to the fans? Yeah, it, it, makes me, uh, it makes me very excited. You know, it, it's very special for me because I'll, I'll be the first one from Golden Boy and the, uh, from the zone to be fighting on the card, uh, on the card right after the pandemic, you know? And, uh, I know a lot of eyes are going to be on on my fight. This fight's going to be a, a very entertaining one. I can tell you that for sure. And, you know, we're, I'm just ready to go. I want to fight already. It's been like half a year since I've last fought, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And now you're taking on Samuel Vargas. Uh, he's an experienced fighter who ha has fought the likes of Errol Spence, Danny Garcia, Amir Khan. What does the victory over Vargas do for your career? If I beat this guy in a very good fashion, uh, I'll hopefully, you know, it opens up some doors for me to, to be able to get to that world title shot. You know, this guy, uh, like you said, he's fighting the lights of Arrow and Dang and all that stuff. You know, I'm fighting I'm fighting him earlier in my career than they had fought him in their careers, you know. So I feel like it should definitely uh, – I should get the same results as they did. You know, they're, they're getting uh, – they got world title shots. I feel like that I didn't remind them. What kind of statement are you looking – to make uh, on this fight with this victory uh what kind of statement to the 148 i'm sorry 147 pound division uh statement wise I, I'm, I'm not too sure what i'm trying to prove uh i just want to show everyone that you know that i'm here you know okay so basically sam sam have already only been stopped by arrow and danny let's say hypothetically uh, i i stopped him too you know with those guys are at the top you know maybe it'll prove to some people that that i'm I'm one of those top fighters as well in 147, you know, but, you know, only time will tell. We'll, we'll see what happens in the fight. Taking yourself out of the equation um, in this welterweight division. So, you know, I know that uh, you could say that you could feel the best, but take yourself out of the equation. Who are the top dogs in the welterweight division? Uh, Crawford and Spence are definitely tied for first, in my opinion. You know, it's a 50-50 fight for me. Um, let me see. Danny Garcia is still a great fighter, you know, just because he has two losses. There, there were two losses in very competitive fights that could have gone either way, in my opinion. Uh, Thurman, you know, he, very, very good fighter as well, and Sean Porter. And there's, there's also Ugas, he, he's very uh, overlooked, you know, he's a very good fighter there as well. Yeah, those are all great fighters. Um, hopefully, down the line, we can see a lot of matchups come together with, within all the names that you mentioned. And of course, your promoter in Oscar de la Hoya looks, looks and speaks uh, very highly of you, calling you the, you know, the future of, of boxing. We've, we've heard that him say that about you. We've heard similar comments about Ryan Garcia. 
do you feel there's a friendly little rivalry going on between you and him as of becoming, you know, the face of Golden Boy in the future? I don't think that me and Ryan uh, feel like we're competing against each other. You know, we are uh, in different weight divisions. And as far as being the face of Golden Boy, you know, we just, we want to be the best at whatever we do. You know, that, that comes with the territory. But, you know, me me and Ryan, you know, we're, we're pretty good friends. And uh, we, we've even talked about it in the past. You know, if we fight each other, you know, we, let's just have fun. And uh, or it, it's always going to be the same. You know, we're, we're pretty good friends. And uh, other than that, yeah. All right. Now, of course, also something that was surprising to hear in, in your promoter, Oscar De La Hoya, was that he mentioned he is looking for a comeback. Uh, it's been a few years. That yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> but now he said he, he wants to come back. What do you make of that? Would you like to see him back inside the ring? Oh, yeah. You know, he, he's brought in so many memories, especially since I was a little boy. It would be awesome to see him fight again. You know that I, I'm definitely open for that. Seeing something like that. Yeah, he was saying uh, somewhere around uh, like 160, or if anyone wants to come up around that that weight. What are some of the potential fighters that, if this were to happen, who would you like to see Oscar De Loya fight against? Man, I, I don't even know. Like, let's say he is 160. Uh, I couldn't even tell you who's at 160. I don't even pay attention to that weight class. Um, and who, who's at 160? Just give me some names. At 160, well, automatically we can kind of take out Canelo. We know he won't fight him. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we also have, like, the Charlos. Um, I mean, even though I know that gets into boxing politics, but let's say with the zone, um, we can have Demetrius Andrade. Um, we can have – oh, you know, well, he's not going to fight having Mungia. <laughs> I'm yeah. Uh, I, would, I would take the Andrade fight, Bubu Andrade. Yeah. yeah, that'd be a really good fight against him and Austin De La Hoya. I, I, I see that fight ringside. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. It's it's surprising. I mean, um, I haven't seen him, you know, put up videos training. Unlike Mike Tyson, who has been putting up videos. Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield. You know, what do you make of of these heavyweights coming back? Where um, uh, this might have been before your time, but maybe through YouTube. Are you a fan of of Mike Tyson and and such? Oh yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, Mike Tyson is one of the one of the faces of boxing. To be honest, you know, you got him, you got Muhammad Ali, Oscar De La Hoya. Those are the names that you think of when you hear boxing. You know, so I think it's good for the sport. You know, it would bring a lot more fans back to the fan base and uh, to the sport. A lot more eyes would be on the sport again and all that stuff. But you know what? I think I, I know you didn't ask this question. I'm just gonna throw it out there. I, we need a game. We we really need a boxing game. You know, a lot of people, a lot of young people play these games. And uh, I started playing 2K20. I started knowing who who players were, like these names and all that stuff. So I feel like that boxers would benefit from that. You get me? So I don't know who I got to yeah. talk to, but we, we got to jump on that. Yeah, we do. We definitely do. There's there's games for, for all these other sports, but we need our, our boxing game. I am with you yeah. 100% on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Virgil, uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you again. Uh, we're so looking forward to seeing you inside the ring once again. If you have a message for all your fans to make sure to, you know, catch this fight on July 24th. Yeah, you know what? I'm fighting on the zone on July 24th. It's it's going to be a really good fight. Uh, I'm going to say that right now. I promise it's going to be a good fight. You know, I'm, I'm going to promise you that this first fight, you know, after the pandemic, it's going to make up for all the months that you've missed the boxing. You know, if, if you've seen me fight before, you know that I don't like boring fights. I'm not, I won't be a part of one. So, you you know that uh, I'll keep my word and put on a good show. Awesome. Look forward to it. Thank you so much. And best of luck, best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, Rizzo. You too. All right. Bye. Did I just sign off? Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe here to Fino Boxing and follow us at all our social media platforms at Fino Boxing and my personal one is at Adriana underscore sports. Enjoy.